Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Reverie Knight's tactics on the Nintendo Switch. This, it's the latest release published by 1C Entertainment. This, it's the team behind Fell Seal. This one though, it's a tactical experience with a whole host of elements to its gameplay, so hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So first up, yes, this video is indeed sponsored, but they gave me free reign to speak about the game. It's always appreciated, and when this team reaches out, it was easy to say yes. This though, no dedicated review, naturally, even if I do structure it like one, so think story, gameplay, graphics, and audio, but it should at least give you a good idea of mechanics and what to expect, and I'll tell you now up front, I'm definitely impressed. So story on this one we take on the role of a team of heroes following a number of events, a team, a group of friends they've gone missing and you need to hunt them down. It's a fantasy world of this one and those last they'd be considered here good friends. That's just the beginning though as you leave a busy metropolis to join a small war camp to setting out to find an Alvian city. Goblins here though, they are the nemesis and they not only know how to swing a sword but also work with the local wildlife let's say and have control over magic and also what I'd call war machines. It's good stuff and what makes it more interesting is the fact that dialogue it has constant moments where you get to choose a response. This not only impacts the responses from those around you though but the game actually features what's called the chaos and order system that directly impacts the story and interactions. So gameplay on this one, it's a turn-based tactical RPG where the focus is squarely on strategic battles set on an isometric grid-based battlefield. The combination of elements here though truly unique, I'd call it part exploration at a basic level, part almost a visual novel though extremely interactive, and part combat. This is accompanied then by a whole lot of like inventory management, crafting and general customization. So first off the battles and here you'll control anywhere from one to four party members in the early game we get a mage, an elf a warrior, a soldier and then a I guess droid of sorts and they each have their speciality whether that's going to be offensive or defensive. The game works on an action point system though meaning you can complete two actions each every turn. These actions then you can double up on movement so you can move just like a little bit further but when it comes to attacks these will actually get additional power instead if you choose never to move. What I really liked with the combat though there's the usual you know setup phase meaning you can place them as you please within like a boundary on the battlefield but when you enter a battle you can be strategic around which foes you face first because they don't always spot you immediately. Also after each use of two action points you'll get to choose which direction you face or block. This seemed kind of minimal at first to me but once I got used to it you actually realize if you get your kind of team to group together you can create a defensive wall of sorts. It has a decent selection of enemies then though of varying power and ability and some now require teamwork if you want to take them down quickly. This is actually when you surround an enemy a new attack option will appear in the menu at the bottom of the screen allowing for a special. This can be anywhere from two to four party members but it was like particularly satisfying to pull off and it's basically a combo of your powers and it's all like accompanied with this flashy animation. As you progress then expect to level up and this accounts for a large chunk of the gameplay. You'll unlock new abilities where you can switch them in and out. There's actually three that can be associated to your character at any one time. You can upgrade attributes which is might, finesse and defense. You can choose from free equipment pieces and finally you can use scribes. These are enchanted at base and they provide buffers like more strength, more health or more mana. Mana is used for all of your attacks in game and it packs a handy little counter above the action item. 
Finally then we even get a special meter for overpowered offensive and defensive actions for each character. I would suggest you definitely use these wisely at the optimal time. It's definitely though overall like small in scale in regards to the battlefields, but that actually works perfectly on the Nintendo Switch and it definitely wasn't lacking intensity. Rounding this out then exploration, it's simple enough, navigate from map point to map point and face that next battle. Every so often then you'll find a hub world, the camp, a fairy village and here you can meet the locals, push the story forward but also accept additional quests. You can also craft here whether that's bombs or food items that can be used on the battlefield. It's unique though this system and there's even a few interactable items in these locations that you can uncover. Think items in the background behind these characters that you are talking to or maybe you'll come across a treasure chest. Likewise then there's even puzzles and some of these puzzles they had me stuck for a little while from piecing together a picture to a laser one which was an absolute pain but it was satisfying on completion. A quick word of warning here though, I just wanna let you know here, on the base locations, you know, the camp, the villages, the towns, you can actually move the camera left to right with the right stick. I couldn't work out where to go at one point for a little while, and it was actually because there was a character just off of the main screen. This wasn't something I was aware of going in. Overall though, look, I'm at about the six hour mark now. I've been having a good time. I've met up with a team of pirates. Now I'm battling my way towards the Alvian town and there's goblins of plenty to face. It has two difficulty options as well, normal and story, and that normal mode, it definitely packs a challenge. The difference with easy, it actually like lowers enemy stats and recovers health after each and every battle rather than requiring items and crafting and yeah definitely normal mode it handed me my ass more than a few times something i did not expect going in on the switch then performance has been flawless it has a slight pause occasionally as you head into these battles when it's loading in the game but otherwise really good stuff so officially then it's got this great cell shaded style to it all of the cutscenes in game it's minor animation meaning almost comic book cell style but with moving backgrounds and then the dialogue it's character silhouettes accompanied with dialogue boxes in game then the map it's top down and the battlefields they are isometric this it's a grid based system so relatively easy to navigate but i would suggest here use the d-pad it's for sure going to be the best setup the characters then they look great and while we naturally see repeats of enemies it's always going to be throwing in someone new to tackle so you can learn their individual moveset. My favourite part though it's the heroes, their animations, quality stuff full of personality and I particularly liked the soldier and shield when she dies it collapses on her and it definitely like nails the sense of humour. The only issue I've really noticed visually, there's some minor pixelation in cutscenes on the Switch, but I don't think it detracts from the experience. And overall, for visuals, I think they've done a really good job. So audio finally and no voice acting which I would have loved but it also makes sense the game has near constant dialogue whether that's in a camp or between battles it is non-stop and yeah I see why for an indie team they could not like you know realistically deliver on that. The writing is solid though it hits the fantasy tropes and it gives you a good reason to be excited about the quest. Sound effects then accompany the locations to a minimal extent and they make sure that each weapon has a tone of some sort attached. The music finally I really liked it, it's quite light hearted actually by design but it knows when to dial up that tension as is needed. So the final verdict and again look sponsored so no score today, I don't do that here but I'm having a great time honestly, they gave me the freedom to speak freely here and I'm a fan of the tactical genre and this one it does not disappoint. It's this unique balance of elements, exploration, combat and heavy story and that just personally absolutely worked for me, it even packs in a few minor RPG elements as well. That RPG might be simple, but it's still satisfying, giving you levels, equipment, and moves to play with all alongside attributes. And yeah, overall, like fans of the genre, I say take a look. It even packs a challenge too, even if it's in its normal modes. My only warning, once you start, there's no changing that difficulty, so make sure that decision, you've made the right one. 
Will you be checking this one out though? Is it going to be one for you? Let me know in the comments down below. With that then, like a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. <laughs>